I don't usually talk about drama, but this is one of the situations where I'm going to be impartial. All I'm going to do is I'm going to read what this guy wrote. Asian guy is essentially a Genshin Impact creator, content creator. And he got into some really big drama. And I'm not going to comment on the situation right now because I don't know what really happened. But the only reason why I want to comment on those, I used to want to be a Genshin content creator, but I didn't couldn't do it properly because number one there's just so many big name players that create content so much better than me and number two i understand that to try to get into the community it's very fake and also very toxic so i didn't really want to get into it for those reasons but this is kind of what ends up happening when you're a big creator and you get involved in drama we're just going to go over his story i'm going to read this as fast as i can and uh, there's no there's not going to be input but I am ESL, so do forgive me if I do mess up on some of the stuff because you can't copy paste this into chat GPT and summarize it, unfortunately. So let's jump right into it. To whomever may be reading this document, I hope that you're all doing well and I hope that you have, or to hope, oh, eh, and I hope that for the many of those reading, especially from my community, I'm all about to share with you where we will provide respite and clarity for the past four months in order to protect the peace of other creators, the communities involved, as well as my friends. I've kept things to myself and often regret not sharing sooner. I ended up taking the fall for things that had nothing to do with me or simply were untrue from the drama involving Braxifone, Tectone, and myself in February. I have quick content creation for an indefinite period of time and I've been taking this time or taking space away from this toxicity in order to seek peace and closure from all the bullshit I've had to put up with. Since February 11, I've had attempted to take my own life twice, failing miserably to do so on both equations and on May 9th, I considerably, I considered a final attempt after discovering that my wife and my partner of 10 years was having an affair during my darkest time. I lost my career to defamation lies and being thrown under the bus by my own friends and betrayed by the one person I cherish more than anything. I've never felt so hurt and alone than in these past four months. I've never cried and screamed so much up until now. Saying I hit rock bottom would be an understatement. I don't want to live like this anymore. I am not resentful or a bitter person, but this experience has changed that and shaped me into someone that I don't like. The one silver line was that I was able to reconnect with many old friends and meet new wonderful people who have no interest in me as a content creator or I can benefit them. I have already started taking steps to rediscover my happiness and I hope that I intend to and I hope that I intend to write can bring me some sort of closure so that I can finally move on with my life. On May 9th I discovered that Evidence of my wife Nekopi was having an affair. I had already known for a few months that something suspicious was occurring. Uh, but even so, deep down, I didn't want to believe it or find evidence to confirm my doubts. I love her so deeply and envisioned the rest of my life spending with her. She was the one constant in my life through all the ups and downs, and that is something that I will always appreciate. While the drama did take a significant toll on both of us in numerous ways, this does not excuse her actions and does and is not the sole reason why our marriage collapsed. I know for our communities, families, and friends, this comes as an enormous shock and disappointment. I know that people have extremely strong opinions about adultery. And I do too. But I hope people can find it in their hearts to understand that this is an incredibly nuanced and difficult situation for everyone affected, including Nekopi. I've forgiven Nekopi and I know that she is truly remorseful and her actions does not erase the past 10 years we have spent together. Filled with beautiful memories and joyful experience. Although we are in the process of divorcing, I still consider her, consider her an important person in my life. She has erased all her social media presence, but I hope People do not treat her with ill will and respect my decision to forgive her. Neko P is a good person that just made a series of poor choices, mistakes under extremely stressful circumstances. I don't want to be a part of the world where people can't give others the chance to make mistakes and learn from them. And I want to be able to welcome her into my life as a friend and share happy times again in the future. The month of May have been extremely difficult for me to have complete numerous to have for me having to complete numerous sponsored con and contractual obligations while pretending that everything was okay to my audience and friends. Only a handful of people I could trust knew about Neko P situation, but many people knew that I was not okay with the damage caused by Braxophone Tectone. Amongst those people were several other content creators, some who were my close friends who knew Braxophone lied about and they knew it could have adverse effects on their entire creator space if I was to ever expose it. I felt like they were constantly trying to keep surveillance on me and guide me in a direction that would protect their best interests without ever explicitly saying to my face. I felt unbelievably isolating. I felt unbelievably isolated knowing that so many creators, including my own friends in this space, knew the truth, but just expected me to take the fall and be okay with it and move on. I know that's what most that. I know that, oh Jesus, I know that's what would have been the most convenient to everybody else and I tried my best to just outlast the pain, but it was just killing me inside every single day. 
On February 3rd, Braxophone created a document making several defamatory remarks about my character and made extremely severe allegations against me. None of these claims were ever backed with evidence, and to this day, they still remain as speculation, including the commentary from other creators that tried to bandwagon MNC. I provided 55 pages of evidence and contextualization, but this arrived too late. As the narrative had already been spun and set in stone by Tectone, as well as other creators looking to get involved like Box2, Gatchasmack, and Mr. Pokem, M. Tash, Mujin. The list goes on and on. So much dis information was given a platform by massive drama creators like Asma Gold and some ordinary gamers, to which led to a complete spiraling out of control of the situation. Lastly, but perhaps the most influentially, my own friends such as Dish and Tuwantu made very public commentary on the drama, distancing themselves with words that would protect their own brand while utterly throwing me under the bus and painting me as the bad guy. Whether or not this was their intention is debatable, and only they will ever truly know what went through their heads in those moments. But the result of their words and actions both publicly and privately caused irreversible damage. I confronted both of them in private at the time, and their responses and apologies were extremely disappointing, with the sentiment that felt like they had excused themselves of any wrongdoing towards Braxophone or myself. Before we go any further, I'd like to emphasize that I actually had dinner with Braxophone in April where we discussed a lot of the drama face-to-face. -face. We talked in length, and I would like to think that we were on good terms, and I know we, he is not a horrible person, nor was his intention to destroy my livelihood. I told him explicitly that I do not want to have this take this route of exposing something he was untruthful about as it would cause way more drama and be destructive to the wide community at the same time if i ever went want to come back to content creation it's also impossible for me to move on without either him or techno clearing my name of all the false narratives and allegations created by or driven by them everyone knows techno absolutely won't do that and if braxophone was to explicitly retract claims he made against me it would lot look good on him either and likely cause an issue between him and Tectone at some point. With that said, Braxophone told me that whatever I had chosen to do or reveal, he would accept it and would be able to handle the situation, and I hope this does not blow up to be another unnecessary drama for his sake and my sake. I've mulled over the decision to go public for a long time, and do not take it lightly. I have held off on taking on talking about this for months because I felt like it was the only right that I discussed this with the person with Braxophone first. I like then we'll spin this into another content forum for a drama and make life a living hell for several others, including Braxophone too. I know for my friends, this is going to be a difficult process and an uneasy time. I know I will be burning bridges to work with companies and brands that I would love to work with in the future should I return to content creation. I know that once I post this document, it, I will be incredibly unwelcome in the creator community for not being able to hold my tongue and choosing to whistleblow instead. I know there's a chance I will regret my decision for the rest of my life, but it has been so bitterly painful and lonely for me to keep it all in. One of the most absurd narratives in Liza Kama of Braxophone's document and Tectone's mouth is that I have the power to influence in blacklist creators from Hoyoverse. I have con I ha that I have the control over who gets sponsored, who contractual obligations with this multi-billion multi dollar company. It's ridiculous. Yes, I vouched for people numerous times and gave my recommendations of promising creators. And these are not limited to just my friends. I have vouched for creators who I have never had interacted with properly with. Two, I will leave the evidence of this at the bottom of this document. However, contrary to Tectone and his friends, I want you to believe this is not something only I am capable of doing. Every single creator who has ever worked or had contact with Hoyo's server staff can vouch for our recommend another creator. It's simple that as typing a name into the keyboard or opening your mouth and saying a name. It doesn't mean that they're going to take the recommendation on board, but it's generally not a big deal. However, due to MTash involvement, Braxamo's document is a technical manipulation of the narrative. My act of trying to help MTash connect with Hoyover staff members somehow became equivalent to me being able to blacklist other creators as well. This is not the only thing that got spun on its head to be something completely false. Braxamo messaged me probably in September 2022 to clarify that how I felt about him. I don't blame that I cannot buy with him on a friend level. I do not like to play fake nice or profane friends with anybody and I hope I like the hope that I had asked the same question with such sincerity to anybody that they would give me an honest response to despite this Braxophone wrote a tweet longer and me soon after about his alt account to being disappointed that me rejecting his advances would lead to him closing out losing out on opportunities whether that be mandatory or community wise considering that this industry works it was reasonable assumption by nonetheless false assumptions I say this because the reality is a lot of people in this industry are spiteful or just horrible and would go out of their way to ruin another person's life. I've seen it time and time again over the past 13 years. However, assuming this of me in the first place was unfair and it has evidently led to this point where we are today with all these false allegations. In October 2022, Braxophone messaged me regarding a very special and lucrative career opportunity with Hoyoverse and I maintained professionalism and gave him the best advice I could. Prior to this conversation, I had given a list of content creators that were guide makers to Hoyoverse 
staff members as recommendations and assume that's why Braxivon had messaged me. Braxivon never brought up this conversation in his initial document and that seriously rubbed me the wrong way. From my perspective, I helped him market himself for a life-changing opportunity I had always remained professional with him in a private contact and he blamed me for all his negative experience he had faced in the career service. The situation was then brought up by the Asthma Girl stream, a large trauma career, to which he denied this opportunity happened and that it actually had fell through. This was a lie. That opportunity never fell through. Braxfilm did land that contract. And I would like to think his comment saying so. I also would like to clarify that I don't think Asu blocked that sponsor deal was out of guilty conscience. If anything, that wasn't good enough, though, as it leaves things ambiguous. In fact, it's just as isn't good enough because it was a complete and uter lie. Techdome had been forcing the narrative that I could blacklist people and chose who gets sponsored to all of Asmogold's viewers and Asmin was leaning into that and trying to prove it true. Later during Asmogold's stream, he asked me if I had ever contacted Hoyoverse above Braxophone. I didn't want to lie, but I also didn't want didn't know how to cover up after Braxophone's lie. I knew Braxophone had a good reason to lie, which I will touch on later, but I ended up saying that I spoke with Hoyoverse about Braxophone's contract, which was a half-truth, half-lie. As I said earlier, Braxophone was on a list I gave to over staff members, but because of MTAB's involvement in the drama tech tone, convincing people that vouching for someone is equal to being able to control overs, I did not want to mention that I had given a list. I knew I had brought up I knew that I had brought that up. The stupid narrative would get parroted and then people would just demand I share the names of all the creators I recommended. It would have just been catastrophic and caused so many other creators, as well as Hoyoverse staff members, to be unnecessarily dragged into this un nonsense and catch trace. At this point of Asmin's stream, I had been up all day having hosted a stage at an anime convention, having hosted my friend visiting from Canada, and then having to deal with all these false allegations for over eight hours with my own stream. I was exhausted, so I told the half-truth that I had spoken to Hoya about Braxophones regarding his contract. As a result, naturally, everyone started to look up to the conclusion that I had sabotaged Braxophones' contract with Hoyoverse and that I blacklisted him. This is ultimately my fault. I should have just exposed the slide then and there and chosen my words better. Having spoken to Braxophones, my assumption was wrong that this list wasn't related to those contracts, but it seemed Seems like this was some generic market research being done by staff. Bryson has never been blacklisted by Horrorverse, and if you go on his channel and count how many sponsored videos he has with them, it's even possible that he is as the most out of any creator in the space. I still cannot believe how so many people were convinced that Convinced and brainwashed into believing this narrative. I understand why Braxton lied. I understand why everyone who knew he lied kept it a secret too, and I don't blame them for it. I truly mean that there is absolutely zero benefit in going against a f going against or fact checking techno and you will ha be dragged into a lose lose situation because he has cultivated a fan base that craves drama regardless of evidence in braxophone's case he has a has a non-disclosure agreement nda which in simple terms nda just basically means he can't talk about things that's it on his contract uh if it was really ill at the time that he had a contract with hoyovers and was earning a lot of money from it techno would have had ripped him to pieces it is exactly the things that he's been cultivating a hostile torrent towards techno has for the longest time been trying to destroy the lives of creators who have been working closely with Hoyovers. Is a community is extremely locked and hostile towards people who enjoy Genshin Impact and wish to continue enjoying the game in peace. Please, I urge people to think about this carefully. How has this become a community that demonizes a creator for being able to work with a game or brand they love and earn a living doing what they love? Why is it that creators especially guide makers who contribute to a community are demonized for getting dream opportunities it's because they don't keep stirring the pot and brainwashing masses of people who believe creators are paid to feed their audiences hoyover's propaganda to sell their characters it's a tinfoil hat conspiracy i cannot believe how easily techno is able to manipulate mobs into turning on their on other creators i've done plenty of contractual work with hoyover's and will be breaking my own nda to reveals but i assure you there is nothing of that sort where Hoyover forces you to lie about characters or their games in order to promote their sales. Techno knows he can spew whatever bullshit he wants and get away with it because other creators aren't going to break NDA to confront him or fact check him. Because that will burn their bridges to Hoyoverse. For those unaware, NDAs are found 99% of contracts are deals in the industry. It's standard procedure to keep information private between contractor and contractee. Please stop blaming ignorance how business work works. Let you be so easily manipulated. Breaking an NDA makes you legally liable to getting your ass blasted. Of course, people don't want to speak up. It's why Braxifone lied too. As a writing, Techno has convinced a large portion of this community that numerous creators must be contractually forbidden from playing a competitor's game called Wuthering Ways if they don't play the game. 
Are people so sheepish they can't fathom that some other people maybe just don't want to play Wuthering Ways for other reason? The game has a completely different aesthetic. The gameplay mechanics are different. The voice acting and the story are subpar. The game is riddled with bugs. There's only other issues. Some people can't even load the game. It's like telling someone who loves oranges want and wants a more flavorful orange to go and eat a freaking banana. Instead, sure, they are both fruits, but they're completely different flavor profiles, and some other people might like both. Some, but not for everybody else. I can't believe I have to use an analogy like this, but the saddest part is that people still won't get everyone has different tastes. The number of creators receiving hate comments since the launch of Wuthering Ways insinuating that they are Hoyovish shills or slaves simply because they don't want to make content on a game they are not interested in is insane. It's all stemming from Tectone. So with all Tectone has done in mind and the influence he wields, why on earth would Braxphone admit to having a contract with Hoyoverse and being one of its prize creators? Why would he bring up the fact that I actually helped him with something so valuable? It completely dissolves so much of the nonsense that was put against me and would instead put a massive target on his back. Instead, I want to remind people what happened soon after this drama. The Honkai Starbucks creator server drama where a selected few privileged creators were invited to make content for its newly releasing character Ashram way in advance to their release into the game. Braxton was invited to this, another example of how he isn't blacklisted. And then what happened? Tekdon went straight after him and the other creators who were invited without rhyme or reason. The first thing was to create drama. This resulted on an on-stream Discord call between Tekdon, Braxton, and several other content creators. And instantly, this was one of the first times ever that Tectone's own community did not echo chamber him. He then rage quit the discussion as his Twitch chat kept disagreeing with him. And it ended up requiring Asmongold's intervention to calm him down. It is embarrassing. This is how he operates. But there is absolutely no benefit to saying anything that would lure the attention of Tectone's drama farming towards yourself. So I understand why Braxton lied. And I understand why nobody else spoke up about the truth. Moving on from the lie about the contract, I want to talk about the blacklist about this blacklisted from Hoyo Creators event, Remark Braxville made. Although he changed the wording, it was far too late when he did. This was a sentence that people used to create the narrative in the first place that I blacklisted Braxville from sponsored opportunities, which wasn't even his main point. The entire sentence should have been phrased into I was not invited to private parties and gatherings, which many creators, including my friends who make Genshin Impact or Honkai videos, were invited to. And Atsu is blacklisting me from it. Yes. The rewording for this makes it seem cringe, and to be honest, I don't think I do think it's still cringe and extremely entitled of Braxophone to have expected such things. I understand it is upsetting to not be invited to parties or gatherings, especially if your friends are being invited, but for almost every single party he mentioned to me when we talked in private, it had nothing to do with me other than the fact that I was in attendance for some of them. So of course it makes me bitter and frustrated to be blamed for it. Regardless of that, I don't agree with the sentiment that people are entitled in other people's private spaces just because they have a mutual connection present. And at this point, Jake, who wants to involved in the drama, rubbed me the wrong way and he threw me under the bus. The biggest gripe regarding private parties Braxphone had was a party hosted by Jake, who wants to, in 2023. From my understanding, I'm just going to call him Tuwanto, okay? I'm not going to call him Jake. Tuwanto, oh, that's fine. Just call him Jake. Jake privately messaged Braxphone during the height of the drama to clear his own name give braxophone the idea that there were never any issues between them. this is simply untrue jake did not like braxophone and he had several valid reasons to like him the main one the main one being that braxophone docks jake's girlfriend at the time and gave a poor apology to her however jake cares immensely about his public image and would rather avoid john where possible so he opted to not be forthcoming in his explanation braxophone i have already talked to braxophone about this and shown him receipts proving that jake did have an issue with him. during the drama jake contributed to this narrative that I had manipulated them. And others are saying a way to Braxphone by confirming parts of Braxphone's document to be true despite it including misquotations or taken completely out of context. The reality of this private party situation is that Jake invited a cosplayer called Yasha Fluff. Jesus. Yasha Fluff, who then invited Ying, <clears throat> a friend of Braxphone's, and she told Braxophone about the party. For clarity, Ying didn't leak the party for any malicious intentions. She was just talking to a friend. Generally, Braxophone 
then proceeded to ask people if they could get him into the party as their plus one. And when Jake found out about that, he was not happy. After digging, he found out that Ying was the one who told Braxton of the party, and so he gave Yasha and Ying a scolding, which would then got relayed back to Braxton, and he interpreted it as him being uninvited blacklisted from a party he was never invited to in the first place. The simple truth is this was the private party Jake was hosting, and it was just poor etiquette for him. <clears throat> Ying to share private information about this in the first place, especially as someone else's plus one. The result of all this was Braxton blaming me for everything when it had nothing to do with me. I personally feel that either Jake or Ying could and should have cleared this up publicly, but neither of them did, just choosing to avoid the drama altogether and letting me take the fall for it. I did confront both Jake and Ying over this matter privately, and I also had to give this explanation to Braxton, which just disappointing to me as I find myself having to clean up after other people's problems which will be recurring which will be a recurring theme dara or dish also contributed to this narrative that i had manipulated people into staying away from braxton and i believe that her comments to be the most damning of them all i also confronted her privately about the matter and i did not feel she really cared about how much damage she had caused me she denied her intention she died her intention was to save face and to protect her public image, but I cannot see from her explanation nor from her wording in her public commentary how this wasn't the case. She made a remark saying that she was very confused by my distrust towards Braxphone after an offline TV party in 2022 where he had all crashed paths and further challenged me to provide explanations. She implied that I had caused a divide between our friend circle and Braxphone speaking for others without a thought, and I could not believe what I was reading. There were so many outlandish claims in Braxphone's document that she could refuted but she chose to gloss over them completely to this day i still ask why friends in the jason communities and even from my real life friends questioning why she wrote on any of this to, or telling me she had stabbed me in the back i know she cares a lot about her public <clears throat> oh boy public image <clears throat> and i know she is extremely calculated with pr she insisted on proofreading and helping me write my 55-page document. I now start to doubt her intentions were to help me, but rather to just check there wouldn't be any damning written anything damning written about her in the document. Ah, thank you, Pablo. This has been the toughest part of the drama to process for me as Dara is someone I deeply trusted and cared. Cared for. <laughs> Amongst other friend group, she is one I had the most serious conversations about life and future with since we were at very similar points in our lives. And this looks like a, Jesus, a tweet from Dish. I cannot speak to all the claims of this talk and I am processing it all, but I will tell you that I was very confused about Atsu's distrust for you and said so in the car after the anime expo party where we all went. And unfortunately, this is where my investment stopped. I heard passing comments about you here and there, but never bothered to ask questions or make up my own mind about the issue. I need to apologize to you and take accountability for not paying more attention to the growing divide between Atsu and our friend circle. For not actually getting to know you myself i have been focused with my career and happiness happy to have friends in this creator space a pathetic and unconcerned with how this ousting must have felt for you reading this now i can see how much it says you i will leave it to atsu to explain where the distrust ends from i am looking forward to hearing it as well but no matter what i owe you an apology i am sorry it's so late for context, after offline TV party in 2022, in a car ride home, I confided in my friends to say I did not trust Braxophone and felt com extremely uncomfortable. Why? Well, it is extremely ironic considering the accusations Braxophone made towards me of spreading rumors, but he made a serious allegation against a presently active voice actor slash actress calling them a sexual predator as the very first topic of the conversation with me at that party. It was jarring to hear or to be greedy in such a manner, but yet I still did not share the information with anybody in the car ride home because this was unstamped, unsubstantiated allegations. True or false rumor spreading, especially to this degree, can have such extreme outcomes. Yes, I repeat this voice slash actor is still active in the community to this day, and I have spoken to people in the VA community and other creators to get a better idea of what the frick is going on. Ultimately, it has been a lot of he said, she said, as well. I found myself just distancing myself from a lot of VA community. Even though there are several people there I think are awesome, I shouldn't have to be dragged into this again by Dara's demands for an explanation. But if I didn't give an explanation, I'm just 
this horribly prejudiced person without a valid reason to feel uncomfortable around Braxville. I've contemplated numerous times whether I should have just exposed everything Braxville and told me about this VA and let him deal with it instead, but that would have been so disrespectful, likely caused more hurt to any victims involved. It's not my place to speak on their behalf. I certainly shouldn't have to come from Braxville's mouth in the first place. It's another example of me having to clean up after someone else's problem and taking the fall for it. I ended up looking like a horrible person because I chose not to spread this rumor Braxville told me to my friends at the time. Remaining on... <clears throat> Remaining on the topic of my friends, we have had a Discord called The Bozos, which I created to play Minecraft with friends and have a place to hang out, which has now been discontinued. I know a lot of other creators hold a deep animosity to this friend group and label. It's a clique because they couldn't get access to the server. It's crazy to me that creators who are friends are not allowed to have boundaries and maintain a tight-knit group without being called clicky for it. Can we please stop acting like every single creator in the world has the purest intentions? There aren't people who are, aren't obviously want to use others for their personal game. Of course, this does not apply to everyone, but it is obvious certain people are hungry for opportunities to grow their own brand. It's extremely telling when people make such a big deal about others not allowing them into their friend circles. Why is that such a big deal? Why do these people have to be friends with specific creators? Does the world end for them? Or is it simply because it stunts their career progression? I always found it damning that by far the most common names mentioned to me from other creators Anthony Chen, Dish, and Tuantu, by far the three biggest creators I am commonly associated with, when there were so many other people in this friend group. For transparency, the people in this friend group were Akron, Anthony Chen, BTMC, Bwap, Dish, and Visidiosity, Fishy Wishies, Fob, and Monster, Los Pro, Neko P, Sukio, Tuantu, at Alice. For those you are more you are more aware of these creators' romantic relationship, you will notice a lot of their romantic partners are not even in this Discord. The reason for this is simply because early on into establishing this Discord, we all had agreed we did not expand the server no matter what the reason was. In order to preserve a safe space for itself, it had nothing to do with disliking other people or thinking we were better than them. I hope our firmness staying consistent with this agreement is clear with exclusion, even of people's romantic partners. Of course, people are able to go and make friends with whoever they want to. That was exactly the case for me. I was incredibly proactive and extrovert in reaching out to others and organizing group hangouts, trips, events. However, because of a lot of the people in this group are naturally introverted and are not the proactive type, Tectona amongst others were easily able to spin this narrative that I'm the ringleader controlling everyone's free will. Many things were shared in this friend group, one of which was my annoyance. with Braxophone having contacted Hoyover staff to complain about me on three different occasions to three different staff members. The first time I found out I remained professional, balled it up and kept it myself. The second time I found out I did the thing still, I still balled it up and kept it to myself. Finally, the third time I had enough, I had two years at this point, I told my friend what was going on. Braxophone could have contacted me at any point over these two years in the same way he contacted the vice over his contract, yet for whatever reason, he chose to contract three different Hoover staff to complain about me and said, I did not block him until I found out that he had contacted a third member. Of course, it leaves me bitter that people question my professionalism when it was he who chose such a drastic measures when I had just kept it private to myself entirely. I kept it a secret from my friends and even from my wife for so long. Eventually, when I did tell my friends that Braxophone was talking behind my back to Hoyover staff, I made it explicitly clear that I did not care at all if they were friends with him. I was informed that the issue Braxophone had was that he felt like he was gatekept from all these people by me. I said the exact same thing about not caring if people remain friends with Tectone when he and I had a very public falling out. That message was received loud and clear, and the likes of Dara and Jake remained on good terms. With Tectone for a long time, period of time. However, when it came to Braxophone, that message suddenly was lost. And now it's my fault that there's a rift between them and him according to Dara. These people are all grown-ups. Why am I being blamed for their inability to communicate like adults? I am not their babysitter and I feel it was extremely disingenuous of Dara and Jake to imply it was my fault for their avoidance of Braxophone. Here is the conversation from that time. If images are clear and clear, please zoom in. Atsu says, can't believe I have to type this, but although I do not trust nor like him, if you 
r slash want to be friends with braxophone it is totally fine i have been told he is going around the hoyoverse type complaining that i am not befriending him as a result he cannot access gain access why do you have to type that sus to you guys damn brax connected likely to the hoyoverse staff and bias was like a poco i don't know about the rest of you guys but i feel like he can't get access is because he hasn't reached out yet well we are all connected to the same people etc oh i assume that other cc's creators he asks those three to be the mailman to communicate with me when he could have just dm'd me and like the last he did anyway there after this ordeal i have just removed him from all my social medias i cba dealing with people like him but likewise the tectone or whoever also, I hope people do not feel obliged to avoid people for my sake. Cope. It sounds like he's maybe too anxious to direct DM. Well, last time he DM'd me, he asked me about our relationship since he wanted an honest answer. So I should have told him I don't like him. Then he wrote a whole twit longer on me. Since when? First time hearing about this. I'm kind of neutral to everyone, unless they're evil. I've tried to be neutral to Tectone for a while, but he made it too hard. So I kind of bumped arms next to each other on his burner. I need to hear about the whole thing with Brax from so foony it's your fault he wants to be friends with you and he was very sad he was invited uninvited from the party bro i was not happy he can suck my ass and ying can too for breaking rules and inviting people as a plus one that's just utterly disrespectful to the host inconsiderate created problems that should not have been made unprofessional very disappointing and others that was mean i didn't mean this but the situation was very frustrating i've never seen you type so fast on a serious note Though mostly this stems from him wanting to be friends with you. And he feels you're being gatekept. So, new friend unlocked. Uninvited. Ying invited him to the party when she didn't have the invites to give out. Or she spread the word, supposedly. When the party was fully capped and he is blaming me for being uninvited. Sigh, deleted user. I also can't believe you have to type this out. I don't think that's the case. I think he just wanted to get into the party. Also, if he wanted to be my friend, he wouldn't have apologized so poorly to... I'm guessing this is the girlfriend during that incident. And I followed and unfollowed repeatedly until I noticed it on Twitter. Also true. I was told he was upset. People went to your party instead of hanging out with him. Can you blame him? It's a party. Sigh. Oof. Deleted user is my ex-wife, Nekopeep. She deleted all her online presence following the cheating. The above act reaction shows that Dara was present and following the conversation at the time. And she knew that what Braxophone had been doing to me. I hope people read this conversation thoroughly. I never spread rumors about Braxophone or even told my closest friends the grief Braxophone was causing for me for those two years. Fob Master was already clueless with what I was dealing with. And for that, for whatever reason, other people, including Drake, knew that I was shit talking Braxophone was doing before. I had even brought it up what I said about an, any creator being able to contact the same over staff is backed up by the start of the conversation between fall master and myself it's literally just community managers who are meant to talk with creators the party situation i addressed earlier and jake's involvement and dasani's towards disliking braxophone is clarified here this is not a dig at jake either he had every right to not like braxophone and the way braxophone had painted himself as some sort of victim with absolutely no friends was also incredibly disingenuous. Most of this came about specifically because some of Braxophone's friends were invited to a party that he wasn't. Genuinely, I'm so sad that I has had to come to this and I just can't believe I've had to share private conversation from amongst my friends just to defend myself because they threw me under the bus. I can't believe I've had to burn bridges be able to work with Hoyleverse and other brands because I had to expose Braxphone's lie about his contract and break ND. I can't believe almost all this grief stems from Braxphone feeling entitled to being invited to Jake's party. I can't believe I left my entire life over all this childishness because these grown-ups cannot communicate transparently with one another. The only person who told Braxophone about not wanting to be friends truthfully from the start was me. And I got punished for it because others were playing fake nice. I got punished because I chose to be professional and kept all this bullshit to myself for two years and suffer in silence. I was so freaking lonely and it's even lonelier in this space now than ever. I hate all this fake nice bullshit in this industry where people just suck up to everybody so that they can keep their options of useful 
people around or pe- useful people open. It is so disingenuous, but so many people do it and are able to disguise it well to the general public. It's exactly why so many lies were able to dogpile me with absolutely no evidence and get away with it. Because surely not all of them could get a, could really just be fake and clout chasing, right? I can't believe even the likes of Sekapoko got away with being part of the dogpile. The man literally hates me because I exposed him for scamming children in another video game. People get the past so easily and it's just the way the entertainment industry works. It would have been fine for me if that was the case for all this nonsense and people moved on. But Tectone is the type that will reignite drama over and over and over again. And he has done exactly that. He knows that he can incite his audience into harassing elders on his behalf without specifically commanding them to do so. He's not an idiot. He knows exactly what he's doing and what kind of demographic he cares to. To this day, I still receive so much abuse from his views and bans, and naturally those fall into the stereotypical package of death threats and now even AI pornography of myself or Neko. How lovely. A lot of what I wrote above is emotionally charged and people will likely find the following hard to believe, but I generally do not resent anyone I feel that wronged me. I am absolutely bitter about the situation, but I am... Um bitter about the outcome not towards the people resenting others is hiring a complete waste of energy at the end of the day it does no good and it is not a desirable characteristic to me now people took actions of self-preservation and i can't fault anyone for doing that it's a natural and logical response i mentioned already that i had talked to braxton in length and i told him i did not want to cause him any more grief however i couldn't truthfully write how i felt without calling him out on a lot of the nonsense he contributed to and i know it's probably comes off as angry or aggressive but i don't think of braxton as a bad person whatsoever yeah i ended up as one of the people i trust the most and someone i told about the necopy situation when it happened it was in hindsight a lot of this could have been prevented but it's always possible but it's always possible with hindsight whether he chooses to address this at all i do not know but i would hope he clears up all the following allegations of narratives that came up from his document and ensuing drama specifically detailing whether it is true or false and either provide evidence or retracting them as he has the power to back us Atsu has the power to blacklist creators from working with Hoyleverse. Atsu has the power to give contracts to creators with Hoyleverse. Atsu spreads hate to a uh, to other creators and industry professionals. Atsu discriminates against white male creators. Atsu only games with people who are bigger streamers in his immediate friend circle, or specifically women. Atsu befriended a creator such as Ant, Dish, Tuantu, Lily Peach to use them and grow. Atsu had privately warned Tectone about Braxophone. Atsu blacklisted or had Braxophone uninvited from parties. Atsu brought people back for a photo to specifically exclude Braxophone uh, at OTV party. Atsu is silencing people to protect Xeox for undisclosed incidents. Atsu is covering up a sexual assault not related to above. Braxophone had, was warned Braxophone warned Atsu about a Genshin voice actor slash actress at the OTV party. Braxophone had contacted three different Hoyover staff regarding Atsu. Braxophone knew that about pay cuts Atsu was taking for other creators from the Hoyos from Hoyo staff. There's any reason to be learned from the suffering is to not give so much of yourself away. Preserving your own mental health and well-being and happiness should be your biggest priority. But keep a lot of it to yourself and it's the only small of the circles you can trust. This industry is unfortunately one where people are driven heavily by greed and when someone has something nice going on for them many will want a piece of it if someone approaches you for whatever reason and you do not want to be a part of it it really does put you in a lose-lose situation be the best way out of it is just to give a lousy excuse in a nice manner keep hitting them with a sorry i'm busy and hope they get the message i guess because if you ignore them they'll start talking shit about you and get the wrong idea but being blunt with them and they'll start talking shit about you play fake nice with them and now you're stuck with someone you don't want around and it will likely lead to bigger problems down the line i look back at the past three years i spent with the hoyo creator community with so much fondness but now i also look back at it with much regret i gave away far too much of myself away to others so much time and energy and money i used to travel across the continents repeatedly see friends resulting in me and looking for my friends back in the uk and losing time with my wife i spent an ungodly amount of time planning trips events or ga- group gaming sessions in order to spend time with friends and bring people together who i thought would love each other's company i wanted the people around me to be happy and experience unforgettable moments and that's what i wanted for myself too i realized now that i cleaned up after way too many people who had relationships slash friendships slash communication problems that 
would bleed into my friend circles and I took the fall for them repeatedly being painted as a gatekeeper or ringleader. People often refer to me as the glue of certain friend groups, but glue is only necessary if something is falling apart and needs holding together. I realize now that a lot of what I perceived to be genuine friendships were actually just transactional relationships all along. And it makes me so sad to see that we see it that way now. I lost so much money taking pay cuts to make things work <clears throat> out and get others involved in cool things, whether it be conquests, oil reverse events, sponsorships, or other opportunities. It bothers me that Rackets most somehow knew about my pay cuts, even though these should have been between me and staff only. I didn't even tell people when I took pay cuts for them to increase the budget to get them involved unless they were being unreasonable with their demands. I think it's so cringe to make people feel indebted to you. I vouch for so many people, including those I'm sure held resentment towards me, which is just honestly laughable in hindsight. I don't like to in my own harm. I think it's also incredibly lame, but I now see that you're damned if you do damned if you don't because people will spin whatever narrative about you. Otherwise, I wish I realized sooner when an idiot I was forgiving so much of myself away and I hope people see what a waste it is to do so using me as a case study I gave and I gave and I gave until there were absolutely nothing freaking left of me. Frankly, my friend's public image and reputations at the expense of my own and what do I have to show for it? I lost my career, my income, I had to lay off my editors. I don't know who is or isn't even my friend in this space anymore and I lost my marriage. That was being a complete and utter joke because I chose to prioritize others over myself. The thing is, prioritizing myself and clearing my name at the expense of my friends isn't going to make me feel any better either. I freaking hate this. I've always wished during my 13 years in this industry, there would be more people out there who would lend a helping hand and help look out for others. Because this is a dream career for so many creatives. When I started content creation, you would get absolutely bullied into oblivion for wanting to be a YouTuber, streamer, cosplayer, or any creative path and be ridiculed nonstop. It is so hard to get into content creation of any kind and find stable footing. And it really breaks my heart that this specific community has become so hostile to those able to pursue their dreams and make a career out of it. Vouching and recommending other creators with the hope they'll get good opportunities is not a bad thing. And it shouldn't be demonized. It should be celebrated when creators get a cool and fun opportunity to work with a brand they adore. Yeah, you might hate Hoyoverse because they won't give you Endgame or more free polls, but please take a moment to realize how much they've invested into the creative and the content scene. Compare them to 99.9% .9 of other companies who would just split on their careers, their creators, and their community instead. The free live events like Hoyo Fair, the free music, the free animations, the free cinematics, the free offline events like conventions and collaborations with cafes or universities, the games themselves are all entirely free. The ability to produce however much fan merch you want to profit from, the list goes on. They actively support the artists and cosplaying scene by giving so much creative freedom. Like certain obvious companies that will copy strike you down. They invested so much time and money in trying to help all of creators grow and become sustainable. Sure, it's not perfect, but do you rather they do nothing at all? Mistakes are bound to happen when you're at the forefront of change, but which other gaming companies have tried to pioneer, invest, and set new industry stands? It's pretty much only Riot Games, and they've taken almost two decades to get to where they are currently at, and they still are still far from perfect. I hope for those reading that are perhaps young or inexperienced with how the world works, that they realize trying to destroy things that allow creative individuals to thrive does more harm than good. We should be supporting one another and not trying to bring each other down for whatever political agenda or farm drama from the downfall of others. It's so saddening it's turning out this way and becomes so incredibly toxic. I really will miss doing content creation, YouTube streaming regularly on Twitch. I hope that I can come back to it all one day with peace of mind somewhere down the line. Whether that be doing content on gadget games or even gaming in general, I don't know. I'll face that when I get to that point. I feel a heavy burden lifted on my shoulder having written all this. I'll do one last farewell stream to speak live with my community to answer some questions and I will probably make a video and include some things I haven't mentioned in this document too. I know people will take us as an opportunity to farm more content drama, but I'm done with those individuals. They're never going to go away. It's baby steps for now and one step at a time on this process of healing. I have some apologies to give and some short open letters I want to write, which I will leave at the end of this document. I know some people will be concerned about me because this document might read as a suicide note, but I assure you I'm doing okay. Thank you to those from my community and friends who stuck by me through this entire ordeal. I love you all so very much more than you could ever know it. P.S. If you see me on dating app, no, you didn't.
Double Vodges from Patreon. I was approached about doing a podcast style event for Horrorverse. However, I didn't feel I was right for this opportunity and wanted to pass it along to someone else. Ashiki was my first program manager, as she is a great narrator and speaker. However, they wanted people who use face cam, so I suggested other good speakers such as Sevi, Braxophone, and Dora. 4 4, I've blanked out sensitive information. Nine she's with Shiki and say she doesn't even do a face reveal. Oh, wow. She's such a good speaker, though. I guess in that case, the other options would be Sevi, Brax, Doro. In terms of people who are actually active in the game and also do they would probably be interested in doing a podcast. I gave a recommendation regarding lesser known careers who might be not be suitable for a caster, host role for future events. While I was on friendly terms with most people here, I am not personally very close to most of them. And these recommendations are based heavily on presenting speaking skills as well as merit for in game knowledge. List of people. You already know there, but I don't think you want to spend time to work on direction for a dedicated video just for some primos. It's all people I think are worth checking out for the casting. Oververse was ho was hosting a special event in the UK and hired a UK-based agency to take charge who reached out to me to participate. I offered to give them some recommendations for creators too, which they seemed eager to see. This email is how I typically speak when I'm pitching myself to other brands or, of course, I included my wife at the time, too, since we were both UK-based. That'd be great if you would have some UK-based creators we could put forward. We have put forward a number of cosplay at the moment. However, no one's confirmed at this point. If you're able to share suggestions with fees required, I can propose them. I'm still waiting to hear back from some creators, cosplay members of the community. However, some of my recommendations... I'd like to be able to attend the event and create a YouTube short. Please let me know if there's any other requirements during the two hours, such as stage, events, slash hosting, and judging, as this will impact the given rates for myself and others I recommend. Thank you. There are, of course, several other occasions where I have vouched, recommended, or even directly pitched my friends slash peers brands, including Hoyoverse, in hopes of getting them cool opportunity for myself and others. Being proactive in this industry should not be considered a bad thing, and it is absolutely not my problem if others are not proactive. Sitting around and waiting for companies to always reach out to you first isn't how business world works. I think it's really because how Tectone tried to spin my proactivity in pitching myself and others into some narrative of how I could choose who to give Hoyoverse contracts to. I did indeed succeed in pitching groups or ideas, including myself to Hoyoverse a few times, but I would also say it wasn't exactly difficult when I was only when I was the only one pitching people to them and nobody else was doing so in the same manner back then. This was the same as Conquest. I ended up pitching a list of creators to them, and thankfully they wanted to give many of us a chance, and it ended up being an unforgettable experience that would have never happened if I didn't choose to be provocative or proactive. So I absolutely refute this narrative that being proactive is manipulative or being snake slash rat. Open letter apologies and letters. I intended to address people tied to this drama that hurt me, and I wish to apologize to others who have had negatively affected by the feud between myself and Braxophone that spans all the way back to 2021. Although I did communicate with several of these people tied to the drama privately, many of those discussions turned out to be unfruitful. I later realized they were being insincere. For many of those, I wish to apologize to. I simply do not know them well enough to contact them for sincere and private conversation. That is not a comment on their character, but a remark on my own own insecurity and paranoia. If your name is here and you happen to be reading this, I would like to know that I hold you yeah, and absolutely no resentment towards you. Even if I feel bitterness or sadness towards our individual situations, even if I feel you wronged or burned me, I do not resent you or I harbor no oil. So that I wish to apologize to you. The sentiment is likewise. I have never held any resentment towards you, but I did keep my distance. I hope that you are able to forgive me for my actions, but I also know forgiveness is earned and not to be given lightly. I really do want to get things off my chest without leaving any regrets behind this and seek closure. List of people. First of all, I'd like to address Aaron Hongi, Brands Online, Alan, XD, Mina, Ioma, Minslift, the Jonathan, and the Unreal Dreamer. I'd like to apologize to you all if I if you have ever been made to feel uncomfortable or unwelcome by me. I have heard that such things were being spoken or experienced by yourselves. And the truth is, yes, I was keeping everyone mentioned at arm's length. I was very much aware that you were all friends or on friendly terms with Braxton, I had no idea whether or not he had said anything negative things about me to any of you. When I found out he was complaining about me directly to Hoyo versus staff on multiple occasions, I was convinced that he, every content creator he was in touch with in friendly manner had probably heard this exact same narrative about me. I'm a very guarded person. I am the type that would rather just not have friendship or connection if it poses a potential risk of me getting burned or someone just having to play fake nights around me all the time. I have never thought of you were any of you are being bad or malicious i hope that's not something that you guys felt it really was just 
a matter of me being extremely paranoid and wanting to avoid any risk of getting burnt again from within this industry. Theron, I know that you had a bad impression of me after we briefly spoke at Angelus NYC party, but I want you to know that my behavior was nothing personal towards you. I don't drink alcohol whatsoever, and I don't like party slash loud environments like the ones we were in, and I just wanted to go home. I was the first person to leave the party since it was so overwhelming, and all my interactions I think were incredibly rushed. I'm so sorry for leaving you with such a bad impression and making you feel uncomfortable. To Bran, I've wanted to reach out to you personally and get to know you on multiple occasions. You're the only other full-time content creator looking in the UK that I am aware of that has actively shown some form of interest in connecting with me. To be fully transparent, I am not fond of channels solely based on reaction content because I feel they are incredibly low effort and often artificial or exaggerated. That does not speak of the quality of your content, though, and people clearly enjoy what you do and do presentation is strong. Above all, I can't fault anyone for the content style, considering most of the content is just compelling and is objectively lazy slash bad. I just want to that is not to say you fake or exaggerate your content either. And I'm wanting to find out more about you. I lurked in many of your streams just to get better out of your character. I recall vividly that I eventually had the courage to hopefully befriend you because I enjoyed the stream vibe. So I raided you on Twitch, but then at the last moment, I pulled back from making any further content because I was just so overwhelmed with the thought that potentially you were just being fake nice to me. One of the biggest fears and traumas from this industry I had dealt with is when people would fake nice to my face in person and shit on me behind the scenes. It happened time and time again with creators I had met in the UK from FIFA and Call of Duty community back in the day. And I couldn't help but feel that might become a real possibility again. At Gamescom in Germany, I also considered reaching out to you, but I remember seeing you with Brax and I also was aware that Brax was speaking to both Fallmaster and to want to about me in person so i wasn't sure he was he was telling you i'm sorry that made you so unwelcome and weirded out do i like z i'm sorry i'm confusing you with someone else but i think that you were the person who came up to me with the camera and asked me to be in your video for anime new your, your nyc 2021 i felt blindsided by that since i did not know you and you found that experience to be very jarring so i was never certain about your intentions towards me from the moment onwards having said that from what i heard about from Rose, you're a really nice person. I also recall meeting you again at another anime NYC event where you asked me and Tuantu for advice alongside Unreal Dreamer. I have regrets about it and cringe over the time all the time. I know my feedback to you was utter garbage, that I was generally so sleep deprived that day and my brain was melting. It was nothing personal, so I apologize for that. To me, Ioma, I don't believe we have been ever interacted directly but i'm aware that you made a couple of efforts to do so in my past on social media when you and ruby had joined gg talent i was excited because i thought it would present an opportunity for us to direct organically but unfortunately that never came i tried to get you involved in a large group sponsor for the game is it you but it ended up being overcapped and i had always been quietly sad about that ruby would speak positively about you and all the time and i lurked in some of your streams and thought you were a really hard worker same time, I also knew you and Brax were close, so I always had the same paranoia about how you perceived me or the other. So, since I had some hope that maybe a chance would come along, and recently there was AFK during the opportunity, but that also unfortunately fell through. I know. I know you likely have a sour experience of sour opinion of me now, and that is fully fine, and I'm truly sorry for negative vibes, but I hope if you were ever seeking some form of closure, this helps. I only have heard really good things about you from Ruby and Tawanto, and I'm glad you're with GG. Minzliff, I know we recently met in person for a career opportunity, and although I, we didn't talk much, I appreciate you a lot for talking about that case of for law for taking that case of D away from me so I wouldn't suffer the consequences of lactose and tons. I was also very aware you made some efforts to interact with me in the past too. And likewise, Mina, I only I had only heard positive things about you, but I just didn't want to risk the chance of getting burned or making someone feel they had to be fake nice to me. I hope we are good now though. You're a very kind person to the Jonathan. I had been told that you felt very un felt I was very unwelcoming <clears throat> of you because you're a white male creator, but please, you know, that's not the case. I still recall the two occasions where we crossed paths in different years of TwitchCon. You know, there was, those were not pleasant experiences for you, and I apologize for that. I wanted you to know that it was nothing personal either. You just happened to catch me at two very bad times. I had to rush somewhere else. I could not give you my full undivided attention for the conversation at the time. I'm sorry about that. And I was also informed about others around the crab game lobby I had hosted and that someone deleted a vouch towards you. I generally had no idea or at least any recollection that this happened, which must have come across as extremely cold since you never received an explanation. To clear any doubt that the same person vouched for you had never once spoken ill of you either, so I would like to assume that it was some sort of misclick slash accident. I'm very sorry you experienced all this. I was hoping to be able to cross paths with you during a Genshin pop-up event and speak to you face-to-face -face and explain it had nothing to do with your ethnicity and apologize about TwitchCon. 
To Unreal Dreamer, you have always been nothing but kind and gentle, empathetic and embracing towards me and others. You messaged me some of the realest words that's low point, even though many of your friends were negatively impacted too. I'll forever appreciate you and respect your character for that. I know often I've been extremely guarded in spaces we've shared, and I apologize that ever made you feel unwelcome. You are a real and genuine one, and I hope you know and will always carry pride in that. I'm going to start sounding like a broken record, but I'd like to reiterate that there is no fault of Brax for confiding in his friends too if he thought there was something wrong doing him. I would have done exactly the same thing eventually I did late in twenty twenty three when I discovered he reached out to a third Hoyoverse to employ about me. I was just it was just shocking to me that when I first found out he was speaking to Hoyoverse staff instead of just messaging me privately like he had done so before. I know it was a blunt response from him, but I still have remained professional afterwards and gave him advice when he asked me for it. So I couldn't understand why he wouldn't just message me again. From then on I could only see him as him maliciously trying to slander my name behind the scenes and turn people against me. It's so ironic and unfortunate because that's exactly what he thought I was doing to him the whole time. And like many have said, this could have been avoided with proper communication. It's easy to say in hindsight though. The gratis, Rin, Sevi, Ten Ten, and Ying, the above is especially true for you all. I considered you all my friends and I enjoyed hanging out in your streams and watching your videos. I felt like the friendships were mutual and genuine, but I also knew you were all especially close to Bax. When I found out he was talking to Hoyoverse employees, I instantly made a very conscious decision to distance myself from each of you and pretty much stop interacting with all outside of liking tweets here and there. I knew you were all some of the closest people to Brax, both publicly and privately. I can get over the idea that maybe you were all being fake nice to me and or would have to start doing so. I can attest from one-to-one -one interactions both online and offline that you are extremely loyal types of people and good people at that. I'm not sure if you guys ever noticed the sign distancing from my end, but it has been something that I haven't always been sad and regretful over. You're all lovely and bubbly people and I've always wanted to reconnect, so I'm really sorry it turned out like this. Lastly, amongst apologies, the one I owe the biggest one to I want to apologize to you, Brax. I'm frankly terrified of the repercussions and fallout you may face from when all this, whether that being from Hoyoverse or from Techno or from other drama news. We have spoken lengthy regarding all this nonsense and throughout it all, you have been kind and transparent to me. I know I am putting you in an extremely difficult position you have been disclosed your NDA and I know you said you all may be fine with it. I still do feel terrible it ever getting to this point. I wish we could go back and prevent all this miscommunication from happening from the first place. I truly feel remorseful and stupid over not taking a genuine effort to understand how COVID and the lockdown did a serious impact on you. <clears throat> I thought it was just an excuse. But the more I see how others who share the same lockdown experience also struggle with social settings, the more I understand how damaging these years lockdown were. As I told you, I generally believe we could have been friends in a different timeline. We share a lot of common especially in our interests and hobbies. And frankly, that makes me sad. That also makes me sad that if even if we did want to pursue a friendship following all this fall, it would come under the intense scrutiny from outside parties and essentially a lose-lose situation. You'd be in the, the middle of irrep irreparable situations between myself and other creators. And I also know that there are people who would also never accept us for giving or befriending one another. And I want to address the people who I believe got involved in this drama with the intention of being to milk it for content and gain from it. Again, I don't want to say anyone here, business is business and there's always a demand for creative drama. If that's the approach for content creation you seek, then so be it. But I really hope that there is humanity in you to understand and empathize with how much hurt your words and actions can cause simply from spreading speculation. I feel strongly that many of you don't realize how much influence you wield and how that could seriously push someone over the edge one day. As Miguel, despite your intention, being to expose me and label me as a rat. I still appreciate that you tried to remain impartial and that you constantly demanded hard, irrefutable evidence from Tectone and Braxphone. I wish you had given me a chance to speak before so much damage had been caused and you platformed so much disinformation from Tectone and Braxphone first through. Just giving a voice to much speculation for a lengthy period of time is going to naturally sway an audience, especially those ready and waiting with pitchforks. The video you uploaded surrounding this drama has millions of views and even the first five minutes are just complete and other disinformation created from Tectone Zero. Braxton should have clarified how his words were decontextualized regarding this, but I also feel that you did not even attempt to fact check things until very late on. I did want to message you privately and have a conversation, but I don't know you personally and I know you care deeply for Techno, so I decided that was probably a bad idea. I know DramaCon is the only just one aspect of things you do, but I really hope you realize you have such a powerful sway and influence on millions of people. I know it's not your intention to have morons harass someone on your behalf, and realistically, 
there's not much energy to stop it once it started. All I can hope for is to appeal to you being more thorough with fact checking to prevent misinformation from spreading and not leaning into certain narratives. If you truly claim to be impartial, it was pretty much a death sentence to me the moment you said you believed everything you had been told and you wanted to prove that I was a rat before even having a spoke having spoken to me, received any evidence, or allowed me to refute any claims. The box too, I've actually looked in your streams and watched a lot of your videos. I think you're a funny person and you don't come across as deathly serious about the content creation game. I feel like you got lost in the sauce during the drama. You made a lot of implicit comments about me and Twitter and on stream running off pure speculation, especially around the photo incident. I was sad to see that you would so easily fall for decontextualized bait and give it so much traction. I remember during one of your streams, you were half joking about talking about joining the army as a career path. I just thought to myself what a waste of potential that would be. I also think it's a waste of potential if you go down the path of becoming a drama creator because your shit posting style of fun is actually funny. I know you didn't go out of your way to shit on me, but you contributed to hateful rhetoric and misinformation, and I hope you realize your words hold more weight than you know. I genuinely wish you the best of luck in your content creation, though. To Dilo TV, I had to thank you immensely. You openly retracted your comments towards me after I posted my 55 page document of evidence, even at the risk of facing criticism and public backlash. You were one of the only few people to do so, and it restored some faith back into this community. It really meant a lot to me, and it helped me feel like I was going insane. I wasn't going insane thinking that people were actually turning a blind eye to the evidence. You're a real one, and I hope to hope your content creation journey goes also goes smoothly to catch a smack. From my understanding, we've never interacted in any shape or form, yet you came after me and I can't fathom why. During the whole Kendrick and Dra um, Drake drama, I saw you post a string of tweets about how narratives get spun, including narratives, not facts. I completely disagree that these two grown men should have been ashamed of themselves for how they are going about the beef. The internet is painfully gullible and biased and the allegations are severe. Pitiful to see you an utter hypocrite. This is exactly what you did and have been doing to me. You took what I assume were Maxwell or Techdome's words or narratives spoken to in private and spun it into defamation towards me on your YouTube channel. So proudly thumbnailing that you knew about it. You didn't once fact check or try to approach me to confirm anything, but jump straight into dra farming drama content. I don't know how you can preach yourself to be a respectable figure when this is the kind of angle you take. Like you said on Twitter about stirring narratives, it's all fun and games until somebody loses their life. So when do you intend to realize how much damage you're able to cause others so irresponsibly? Are you sitting there rubbing your hands at this document thinking it is just another juicy opportunity for content? Or do these words even mean anything to you? You had a public drama with Tectone and seemingly made amends, all of which benefited your career trajectory. So what is your genuine belief and what is just purely for content? Your actions confuse me immensely. To Goose Egg, we talked and called in private and I thought we had cleared things up. I have since found out you've gone behind my back and been talking shit about me to Tectone and allowing him to spin a completely different narrative to what you told me. I let you proof you what I had written and you gave me the okay sign twice for you to then go back on that and it's so disingenuous in two-faced. Both you and Tectone had massively public following. Oh, and I don't really know specifically what you or he has shared to your communities regarding this. While I feel bad for insulting you and labeling you as a copy of Tectone back then, I don't understand how that has anything to do with the doxing and security camera problem between the guys that he gave you a ball looking for. Maybe I don't have the full picture and it's all Tectone spending this narrative and rewriting history, but I don't have any faith talking to you in private anymore. I'd also like to remind you that remind you that you came swinging after me first. You and Tectone started running my name through your mouths on yours and his stream completely unprovoked back then. I made a general subtweet that included but was not limited to just you guys after after that and you ended up milking it for drama for a drama video. I responded and I responded and insulted you by comparing you to a copycat of Tecton and was extremely harsh with my words, to which I regret and I have since apologized. However, you told me privately that you guys had a completely separate issue, which led you to having to move out and cutting ties with me. And I believe you have believe you've even shared much of this story publicly to your own community. The fact that he was a grown ass man, age of twenty seven or twenty eight at the time, and you took it in 
as a very young adult to live with him. But then somehow you guys ended up not on speaking terms after this other drama. It's not my issue. If you guys had communication problems, why is it my fault you couldn't solve that between yourselves? It's I'm so disappointed in this. I really thought you had changed and matured from the conversation you had. To Hei and Two, we've met only once at anime nyc event and we barely interacted maybe we didn't exchange any sense at all from my understanding you're one of the biggest influences that's led to a lot of confusion behind the scenes and a cause for such rumors to spread i know you try to get in touch with me to clear things up after i discover your involvement in all this but when i found out you couldn't even provide a name despite telling braxton that people were warning you about him i wanted nothing to do with you however how convenient after i take so much hate and bullshit over this whole warning narrative that you suddenly forget who warned you. I know for sure your person couldn't have been me because we've never had a conversation in any capacity. So all I can conclude is that you're either covering up for the person going up for someone who you knew is the actual culprit or you for whatever reason lied to me about Braxfilm. I would like to think it's the former and rather than the latter. I also know you were aware that Braxfilm lied about having a contract and that you're one of the people that talk to others about him having one. To Mike, M Tash. I have considered you a friend for a long time. You were the only person who truly was there for me. And even through, and even trying to meditate with the techno was blowing up a previous drama and being obtuse about it all. I ended up crying in front of you and I felt that you did genuinely care about my well being. I can't tell you if your intention was to look out for me or to drag me this time around. I look at your channel during the period of drama and see you have two videos that did really well for you that are damning for me as i write this and go grab a screenshot i have now realized you even deleted your video that was being impartial towards me and platforming my 55 page document of evidence i am stunned you contribute immensely to this narrative and that just because i can recommend or vouch for someone to a community manager that doesn't somehow logically mean i have the power to blacklist people you even asked me if i had blacklisted or spoken against you i was less speechless that you assumed that of me when i had only tried to help you in hindsight you know better than anyone how to get yourself blacklisted in person. i know i was unkind to you at the start of genshin and i truly regret that so i cannot blame you if this was you getting back at me i still hold a lot of love and respect for you but i want you to know that you seriously hurt me with the way you went about this drama i don't know what your true intentions are anymore to mr poke i think you're entertaining and i think and i've also lurked in a lot of your streams it would be an understatement though to say you milk this drama to complete to a completely different universe. I hope you're also aware that going down the drama route and farming people for drama, even as a joke, especially when they don't want any part of it, is just generally unpleasant. People have cleaned up after you and covered for you more than you realize, and you are lucky to have a good people looking out for you. On a more positive note, stay shredded and give people like me motivation to hit the gym. And I also wish you a lot of luck with full time content creation. To Mujin, we've never interacted, and to my knowledge of you, that you're a drama-focused creator. Likewise to others, I don't think you had an intention to cause shit for me, but you also made several comments and remarks that caused me grief. The way you went about it was quite childish as well. I hope you realize you also hold a lot of influence. If you're going to cover so much drama, I'd also hope you go on beyond to get all the facts properly. Otherwise, you're just milking speculation causing her for so many people. There's not much more to say than that. To second Boko, there's no running away from past. You know what you did. And you should own up to it and grow from it. Scamming children isn't a joke, especially when you are a father. The people of the One Piece Treasure Cruise community are not going to forget your roots. There are far better ways of making money, and I hope you are not a complete grifter anymore. Also, please don't try and pin yourself being blacklisted from Horrorverse on me. You literally covered so much leaker content and kept doing so. It should be obvious that they are not going to be working with leakers. To Sip Sip Stefan, I still can't comprehend how you bully wrote on an entire fake sob story defaming me to farm internet points without a single ounce of guilt. I genuinely considered suing you for defamation and libel, libel, and frankly, you are lucky to be in another continent as that was the only thing preventing me from doing so as that complicates the legal jurisdiction and procedure. You're also very lucky, in my opinion, that Hoververse hasn't sued you for exact same thing either. So I hope you do take this as a warning and change your ways. Some warning gamers. I don't even know much about you other than that you're also a very big and successful drama content viewer. There was a time when the wave of hatred towards me spiked again and I discovered that it was coming from you platforming Tekto and covering the Genshin drama. You did not fact check anything either and just milked the speculation. I don't know you personally or even 
have the most basic idea of what kind of person you are. And this will likely fall in deaf ears, but please do your research. You have such a big audience and your words and actions will inevitably have massive influence for better or for worse. Detectome, we go a long, long, long way back now with plenty of ups and downs, but it's been nothing but downs for the last three years. I've already touched on this goose section, but I don't understand how you are capable of spending whatever happened to you guys privately into my problem. You're a grown ass man and you can choose to take him in as essentially still a kid. If you could not look after our or communicate with him properly to the point where the guys refuse to talk to each other. That's not my problem. I told you this before, and I'll tell you again, seeing as you love to bring it up, but I never forced you to reveal your DMs to me. Goose did not convey my words properly, and I still vividly remember you walking into his room and with so much anger, and you asking him if I was going to leak your DMs, and him responding, yes. I never said such a thing. I said that if you wanted to share anything from your dms you were always free to do so because i knew exactly how there was a lot of sense of information in there from what i've seen you flip-flop a lot over past always alternating between we were good friends just friends acquaintances not friends etc etc it's the whole spectrum for me you were the friend that dragged me out of a sad lonely place following all the zhongli drama and i truly believe you were a good friends loud and obnoxious sure but a good heart nonetheless we spent a lot of time talking and even hanging out in private calls which is not something i rarely which is not something i rarely do or even do now i cared immensely about you and thought you were a kind person that could take confrontation and be checked by your friends and I was under the illusion you also viewed me as a close friend. I realized after the Kelsey slash gaslighting drama, that wasn't the case and you were completely different to what I had known. You couldn't even spare two minutes to speak to this person. And I know that it was unfortunate understanding, but you have to see how much bad that looked for you at that time. As someone who was publicly close to you, I got so much flack just being friends with you. And every time you would get involved in drama, it would cause myself and others grief too. I remember the time when you tried to make me feel bad at about calling you on some of your bullshit by saying to want to and dish always backed you but i'm sure it surprised it probably surprised you when i called in the yes men for doing that too i've always been blunt and honest with my peers and friends i think someone is doing something bad i don't have an issue confronting them about it if they truly are my friend care about me or just some narcissistic asshole having that kind of different difficult or tense conversation shouldn't be a problem between us people are terrified of you since you generally destroy someone's livelihood and you are relentlessly involved in drama as well as others constantly involved in it i've always hoped you would change your ways to be less destructive towards others but I realize now that that was all in vain. You have succeeded in cultivating a community that actively craves, celebrates drama, harassing other content, other creators on your behalf without you even having to command them to do so. I guess I can only congratulate you for getting to a place of sustainability now. Uh, screenshots. Tectome. Yeah, so did other C's content creators. Do you know what the other content creators did say? Hey, man, don't get why you did all this. Get this. Hey, I hope you're all right. Stay strong. Yeah, that's called being a yes man. I don't think your wanderer was in the right would you like to know the content creators you just called yes man go for it do you think two is a yes man yes you can be do you think dish is a yes man people don't want to have problems with you why would you why would them saying hey hope you're all right be considered as an attempt to not be have problems with you? because they're not willing to check you they might check up on you but they're not the same thing as checking you if you step out of line everyone stays silent is that a good thing for you I know our bridges are completely and utterly burned now, nor do I expect or want to repair them. I do not care for that either. The one thing I do hope one day is I realize that I did genuinely care about you and had the best interest in mind. My worth was as fond at the shoot with Crown Channel. He asked me about my opinion of you and how you were always involved in drama. I've, I vouch for your character, saying it was a lot unwarranted. When Rich Campbell put you in contact with Dr. K, healthy gamer GG, I was so happy for you. I even sent him a message because I thought there was some sort of genuine introspection and progress. Even after I fallen out, I still wanted to game with you and free him because of because to me it was just two friends butting heads. This was the last converse message between us. I know now that it's not how you ever saw a relationship. Both of you had always remained dear to me for a long time. You guys had done a lot for me in way in ways you probably didn't even know. The rich thing was getting techy with Dr. K. He really needed this, and I think this is going to help so many people in the community watching the stream. And it's been so productive and progressive. Thank you, man. I love techy so much. Dr. K is so incredible. I'm glad I okay. No, no, thank you, really. Since then, you repeatedly insulted my intelligence, my character, even after you cut me off from the, your end and publicly say you never wanted anything to do with me and did not want to talk to me. I always respected that and never mentioned your name again in any public setting until you started incessantly dragging 
I link to the mud on your streams. This then got even more worse when we started streaming with Goose. Even after Goose drama, you revert back to the whole I never wanted to do anything with the whole Atsu again. He is dead to me mentally and again. I respected that. However, the cycle repeated and you kept slandering me completely unprovoked again. And it's just not me. You kept doing this towards so many other content creators too. Like, it's some sort of irrepressible addiction. Even with Braxbone Genshin boycott drama, I wasn't even active at the time with social media or on my channels because I was so addicted to Powell and Grand Blue Fantasy Ruling. Really. Yet, I found out you were relentless lying about me and accusing me of controlling Holyverse and their contracts. Once again, completely unprovoked. And so, I eventually took a dig at you back. Lost in the sauce is the perfect description of how I feel. Well, you know, I don't resent you for at all, but I am just really disappointed that you've changed or were just completely different from the person I thought I knew. You used to be a vocal advocate for mental health and seemed to be such a genuine and caring person, often sharing your difficult past and traumas to provide safe space for discussions for your community. Nowadays, I keep seeing you getting involved in over-sexualizing characters and catering to a misogynistic environment. Whether serious or satirical, you must surely be aware of what kind of individuals you're empowering. During the asthma gold mediation, you were far too excited when I mentioned there had been a sexual assault of someone in the community because you wanted to use that as a gotcha woman spin a narrative that I was covering in a sexual assault. I couldn't believe that I had to explain it. Not my place to speak over the victim and how much harassment that could cause them. And it further took asthma gold to agree with me to stop you from trying to milk it. Considering the controversies of uh otk as well as people you were associated with and your very own traumas i generally was stunned that you could even approach the situation in that way that is when i knew you had completely been consumed by this obsession for drama content when even a sexual assault was now just to content to be farmed and serve as your narrative agenda i'm sad that our friendship could last in the way that it did and i'm sad to see who you are today I know none of this matters to you and it falls in deaf ears. I know you would just sweep all this along with your mistakes and wrongdoings of the past. Under the rug as manipulation tactics, you'll likely make a video to milk this drama even further, cutting out the misconstruing information to serve your narrative. I have the slimmest hopes that these words could even reach any form of humanity that is left with you to help you realize how much destruction and hurt you've caused so many people. You're not this woeful victim that you keep convincing everyone that you are. It is not a coincidence you are always at the center of drama. Yes, you've been wronged and scapegoated on some occasions in the past, but you can't keep defaulting to this excuse when things don't go your way. You have people who care about you around you, and I really hope you keep that in mind. Seeing the way you reacted to the Honkai Star Wars creator server drama when even your chat didn't want to side with you was really disappointing. It shouldn't always have to be asthma goal or a much larger creator disagreeing or explaining things to you for you to realize sometimes what you're saying might be wrong, misinformed, or harmful. Techdown, you are one of the most influential creators in the space today. You cannot be oblivious and keep feigning ignorance on how your involvement has created such a hostile and toxic environment towards other creators. Why do you try so hard to destroy other people's livelihoods? Is it not enough that you are able to farm drama content and make so much money from it? In the own stories you tell, you came from nothingness to success, yet for some reason you cannot empathize with other people struggling to find their footing in the content creator world. These people aren't even trying to harm you or bring any grief your way, yet you still get yourselves involved in their business, whether directly or indirectly with all these conspiracy theories. When will you be satisfied? When will it be enough? I know writing all of this will likely fuel you to keep coming after me for an eternity. I generally want nothing but the best for you, so long as it doesn't involve you causing so much grief for other people. I hope this will be the one and the last time I ever have to just address something regarding you in a public setting. I'm tired of the drama you keep dragging myself and others into. I don't want anything to do with you. And I really thought that was the same for you, but you just can't seem to stop yourself from putting my name in your mouth. You did though, you completely at least destroyed my livelihood and sanity, what more could you possibly want from me? I really do wonder if you would have felt anything at all had I gone through and succeeded in my suicide attempts. To my friends, Dara Dish, you probably know I already, you already know how much grief you caused me with your words and your involvement in this drama. I really don't resent you and I still don't care about you deeply. That experience, however, has made me feel bitterness and I have never felt throughout my entire life. I wanted to see you and Ellie to confirm myself that I didn't have some sort of repressed negativity towards you. You can't say I do. When I saw you and Joshua, I felt peace and comfort around you too. There's, uh, it has, however, been difficult for me to act like nothing was wrong this whole time. And I'm sure you sense that from me. 
every other day I would be tossing a coin in my head on whether or not I want to bury this hurt for the rest of my life in order to sustain our friendship. I would keep second guessing if any of our interactions were ever genuine or if they were all transactional. You were the one of the people to drop by London and actually hang out and I really appreciate that. Even if that wasn't the main purpose of your trip, I hated how I started to doubt your friendship towards me, but I also was never able to truly get over the position you put me in and things you could have refuted but chose not to. I couldn't fully agree with the negative things people started saying to say about me, about you, because I know how your brain operates and I don't want to believe you had actual intention to harm me in any way. I know you're really saddened by Braxophone's words and hurt, and I want to believe you genuinely felt a need to apologize to him. I still disagree that the thing so in the public manner you did was the right choice, and I do firmly believe part of your judgment was influenced by a desire to protect your public image. It bothered me a lot that you couldn't even pub comment publicly about Braxophone's insinuation that I had befriended you as a form of investment to grow my own brand. Of all the people in our friend group, you should know best that I am the laziest and least ambitious bastard when it comes to group collabs between us and my own career in general. You, Jake, and always grilled me on my thumbnails and the way I did my things on my channel. I always appreciated that you always tried to push me to be better, but you know I don't care about growth like that. It bothered me that we had talked about the tragedy happening in Palestine in person and you knew how I felt about the situation, yet you happily let Braxman comment about the situation slide. It bothers me that he claimed I discriminate against white male creators and you let that slide. It bothers me you knew he was accused causing me grief and you let that slide. I know you were disappointed in my initial reaction to him. It was angry and it was bitter, but you are one of the people who should have known best exactly why I had so much rage over it. Before publishing this argument, I did want to add that I saw that you sent me a 10 minute voice message today on June 8th. I apologize, but I cannot bring myself to listen to it right now. I have no idea what you have said in it. I couldn't get past the first five seconds without feeling triggered. This is temporary. I'm extremely emotional after having written this document and I will listen to it in due course. I still love you and Joshua lots. You guys are some of my closest friends and I really wish nothing but the best for you guys. I hope that we can still be friends and share smiles and laughter together. And I'm sorry for any hurt I have caused you guys. To Fob, Master, you are a freaking ape. I know what you wrote publicly was nothing to do with your public image, but you just wanted to be friendly to everyone. I know the drama was stressing you out, and I know during Gamescom you were also stressed out by the situation. I also know you did eventually post a reply and state on your own stream that I don't control who you befriend or manipulate or manipulate your decisions, but I also feel that it came a bit too late. You're one of my closest friends too, but I do think sometimes when you sit on the fence and play neutral, you're sending a very mixed message to masses. I still love you dearly, and I hope that one day I can take you and Lily around Japan to go exploring together, monkey. To Jake, to want to. You're one of my best friends, and I still see you as my, as my best friend and brother. It's exactly for this reason I really didn't feel you would ever understand how much I have suffered in order to protect you, unless I went through the extreme of publicly addressing you. When I see you now, I fear that you are far too gone and lost in the sauce of content creation game. You have big goals and big ambitions, and I want nothing more than to help you achieve those things, but I can't keep cleaning up after you or taking the fall for anyone. I've confronted you before saying that sometimes people, including myself, are fearful or struggle to communicate with you, and there have been a lot of janitorial work I have had to do around you and our friend circles as a result. I do think you have become more cowardly over the past years and feel like you should be fearless in your choices and beliefs instead of bending backward over the masses. I'm getting cancelled weighs on your mind heavily, but you're definitely overthinking it as the expense of your own sanity and happiness. You've been a great friend to me for such a long time, but I feel our friendship has changed since the back from drama, and you've always walking on eggshells around me. I couldn't tell any if you were generally concerned about my well-being or just wanted to maintain surveillance on me in the past few months about when and how I would be commenting on the way I had been wrong. Likewise, Dara, I'm sure you've sent something that was amiss and has been hard for me to act completely normal around you. I'm sad it has come to this and I am really disappointed in you and how you went about Braxophone drama. You are the one single person who should have known far better than anybody else what I was putting up with. And you even knew about things leading up to before I even knew about it. 
this open letter is by far the hardest for me to write since I care about our friendship the most. And realistically, I know this. This will damage your faith in me and change the way you view me. Whereas I will truly regret this, but right now I feel like this is necessary. We have shared countless unforgettable and wonderful memories. You've changed my life and for the better. And I will always love you as my brother for that. I hope that we can move on from this and repair things. But if that's not possible, I want to believe that I'm prepared for the outcome too. I know speaking against you publicly will not make, not only against you will make not only both of us uncomfortable, but so many others too, as we have such ma so many mutual friends. I'm so truly very sorry that I ended up taking such drastic measures. I really did not want it to come to this. To Nick Zyox, I told you about this in person, but I feel that you've matured a lot over the past two years since I met you at Anime Expo. You and I are both aware that I have gone out on my way to clean up after you for certain issues. When I found out I was getting accused by Baxter Foam and people behind the scenes were saying I was protecting you over things I was completely unaware of, I was pissed. I told you recently face to face in LA that he seemingly had dirt on you and your reaction to the information was extremely disappointing me. You repeatedly emphasized how you would never side with me publicly regarding drama, yet you still wanted me to clarify things and relay information to you. If I got slapped to the face, is he talking about X? Is he talking about Y? Was it Z? I don't know you. I'm not your messenger. And this was like an insult to injury. I already know very well you care deeply about your public image and you specific toy to avoid all forms of drama. I never expected you or ever asked you to side with me publicly at all. Your comments were totally unnecessary. I don't want anything to do with whatever skeletons you may or may not have in your closet and you need to work this shit out with Braxifone by the leader. From my understanding, neither of you have made any efforts to contact each other over it and plan to sweep it under the rug, which is just going to lead to more rumor spreading. I hope this will prompt you guys to take you guys to communicate and squash whatever this beef is because I refuse to deal with this or take any form of responsibility for it later down the line. I'm sorry for the grief this might cause you, but I am genuinely sick of getting dragged for other people's problems. Likewise, to Jake, I feel you're also getting lost in the sauce and starting to go down a path of cowardice, bending over backwards for the masses. I want to see you and grow and succeed. And I also want to go back to the days where you, Alice, Zaj, and I could just chill and play old school RuneScape, but that's never going to happen if I just keep kept keeping this to myself. I know... You likely won't approve of the way I went about this or see eye to eye to me on it, and I apologize for that. I'll likely do a live stream or video within the coming days to address anything that is unclear or things that I may have missed. I could honestly write a hundred more pages on all of this. There's so many layers to all of this, but it's such a waste of energy, and I'm exhausted. I want to move on and just get on with life. Thank you all for reading. If you got this far, I really do feel a massive burden being lifted from my shoulders. I will continue to remain active on my alternative alternate social media accounts on Twitter and Instagram, but I don't think I will post frequently on my main accounts outside of special occasions. I'm mainly active on my YouTube, Twitch channels for the seeable future once I have done my farewell pieces on there, and perhaps I seem to on my second Twitch account. I really don't know what I'm going to do with my life, and I don't have a kind of concrete pets. I want to heal and do some soul searching. I intend to travel to several places and work on my fitness, so hopefully if I am ever able to make a full return to content creation, I'll have a lot of stories to tell and have a chiseled six pack. If you're a friend and wish to remain friends with me, please message me. If you wish to cut me off, please, please feel free to also just let me know with a message. I don't want to play the guessing games and I promise that I won't take it personally. Whatever you choose, if it's easier, please just soft unblock slash unfollow me on Twitter or delete me from Discord. I really don't want to guess what someone's silence means.